Joining us this evening on the piano. Hello. Hello. Joining us this evening on the piano is Jane Howard. Please rise. Thank you very much, Ms. Howard. I just had to turn your lights up. <clears throat> the, tennis, the tennis club is having a bake sale. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say a few words about the debate Monday, uh, last Wednesday. During those zoning articles, it turned a little ugly. We had folks questioning people's motives. We had people um, saying uncivil things about other members of the meeting and about our Board of Selectmen and Volunteer ARB Committee. That's not the kind of thing we like to do. Um, I had to use my gavel and I had to get mad and I don't like to do that either. So let's try and not question people's motives. Let's keep our discussion civil and just keep to the topic. When we do that, we do very well, and we keep on track, and we can move forward. We don't get waylaid into um, needless discussion that doesn't advance any of our articles at all. That being said, any town meeting members who have yet to be sworn in? None. Okay. Um, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Ms. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is moved that if all the business of the meeting as set forth in the warrant for the annual town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Wednesday, May 11, 2016, at 8 p.m. All in favor, please say yes. yes. Opposed? Okay. Um, any announcements or resolutions? Mr. Um, Marr. Thank you, Mr. Moderator John Marr, Precinct 14. This week is National Salvation Army Week. Uh, I have the uh, privilege of serving as the chair of the Greater Cambridge Salvation Army. And one might think, what's Maher doing up there talking about the Cambridge Salvation Army? As a matter of fact, the Greater Cambridge Salvation Army includes Somerville and Arlington. One might also wonder why uh, Arlington is covered by what services are provided in Arlington. Actually, there are quite a few. Uh, they're a little bit below the radar. Uh, one of the principal ones is Shea House, uh, right, on, uh, over on, uh, uh, right off of Pleasant Street, which is a transition uh, house for uh, men with prior uh, substance abuse problems. In the 20 years that it's been there, we've had one minor incident and has been a, a very big success. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at Andrew Fisher about 18 years ago. This matter became, the, the, the location of that house came before this town meeting and uh, was a lot of NIMBY uh, sentiment against it. And Andrew Fisher, to his in eternal credit, uh, turned the c discussion on, its, uh, on a dime and was, uh, it, it was, it was passed by this town meeting and it has been an unmitigated success. Some of the programs that we run at Cambridge Salvation Army are Bridging the Gap, which is 
uh, a program for at-risk kids who are in the court system, uh, and we uh, attempt to get them out through tutoring and other support services. There is a, a shelter for homeless men. Uh, there is a Mojo program, which is for substance abuse counseling, and my favorite, which is our place, which is a uh, daycare for homeless kids. There are vacancies currently on the board. Uh, we've had a, very met, a number of uh, people of town meeting uh, in years past that have served on that board. We would welcome anybody who would be interested in doing the, the uh, uh, time uh, commitment is, is very minimal, uh, min actually just about an hour at a minimum per month. You're, there's certainly opportunities to serve great, greater than that. We meet on the third, Thursday, third Wednesday of each month we start at noontime, we have it in the lunch hour. So there, I would welcome anybody who wanted to meet me at the break or any other time who would like to participate. The motto of the Salvation Army is doing the most good. We would welcome anybody who would like to assist in that. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Tosti, Tossi. No, oh, no, Al. I, think I pronounced his name wrong. Tosi. <laughs> You'd think I would know. The other, Bob Tosi Jr., Precinct 20. Uh, I know we have two nights of a very important debate ahead of us, but just quickly, this Saturday is a U.S. Postal Service food drive, and I rise every year to remind all town meeting members and everyone watching at home to contribute and participate. You leave non-perishable items out at your front door, um, and the mail carrier will pick it up and bring it to our local food pantry to help uh, hungry people and needy people among us in Arlington, and there certainly are those people, and they are growing. Um, but that need is, goes on all year, not just this Saturday. So um, if you can do it Saturday, great. If not, remember to uh, put some food aside, some cereal boxes, peanut butter, and so forth, and, and donate at your local churches and, and businesses that will bring it to the food pantry. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Sir? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mark Spengler, Precinct 10, and, uh, treasurer of the uh, Schwamm Mill Preservation Trust. This weekend, our, the old Schwamm Mill is again participating in Freedom's Way Hidden Treasures, which is a week-long celebration of some of the great historic sites that are throughout the uh, region. And the tour, the, excuse me, the mill is giving tours from 11 to 2. And at 2 o'clock, we have a special lecture on the beginnings of the Schwamm brothers. The Schwamm brothers were their true industrialists, have a big, big impact on the town of Arlington back in the 1900s. The suggested donation is $5. As treasurer, I think it should be 10. Uh, and I would like to say thank you to all of you that do support the Schwamm Mill. And if you haven't been there, you should visit. Thank you, sir. Ma'am? Thank you. Sarah Burks, Precinct 17. I just wanted to bring your attention to um, a supplement to the Cyrus Dallin Art Museum's Board of Trustees uh, report, which is in the printed annual report, but we have a supplement that's on the back table tonight providing you with a, a brief update about the exterior renovations that are going on at the Jefferson Cutter House across the street in the center. Um, this has been a terrific partnership between the nonprofit arm of the museum and the town. Um, we want to thank the planning department, starting with Carol Kowalski last year, who worked with Heather Lavelle, our part-time director curator, in putting together the grant application to the um, Mass Preservation Projects Fund. Uh, that was successful in getting $65,000 from the state for the rehab. That's been matched by the town. Uh, 60000 of that came out of the CDBG funds, and the work is well underway. You'll notice the new roofing shingles that have gone on in the last week. Before that, they were rather green and living a, a, a living roof, a green roof, <laughs> but not the good kind. 
And um, that was a real problem last year. We had a lot of squirrels that got into the building and tore up our storage uh, rooms and in the attic. And so we are thankful to uh, the town in helping us um, uh, remediate that situation humanely. No squirrels were injured in the process. Um, <laughs> we also want to thank Ted Fields, who's been um, coordinating the project with Heather Lavelle, Patrick Guthrie, who was an advisor to the museum in this process, Wendy Frontiero was the architect, uh, Olson Company is the contractor, and uh, we're working out the details of the historic paint colors. There was an analysis done by William Finch, who's a preservation consultant, and we're working with him and the Massachusetts Historical Commission on the colors. It's gonna be more of an ochre, a yellow ochre color. Um, so there'll be changes um, to celebrate. Um, on the back side of this handout uh, are a list of some upcoming events. We are also participating in Hidden Treasures this year on the 21st. We have a picnic in the park with a, a concert by the Creek River String Band in late July. Our uh, fundraiser, the Summer Soiree, which I hope you will consider coming to and supporting the museum and the annual Art on the Green during Arlington's uh, Town Day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else on announcements? Okay, seeing none, let's do our test question. So get your clickers out, uh, Mr. Lathwood, whenever you're ready. So the question today, <clears throat> is Lake Superior the world's largest lake by surface area? One yes, two no. Is Lake Superior the world's largest lake by surface area? I know the answer, so I'm going to abstain. Seventy-two. Ah, the answer is yes. It is. <laughs> so 109. I have to go back to school for geography. Um, any committee reports? Oh, Mr. Carmen first. All right. All right, Mr. O, you can go. You're standing up. Clarissa Rowe, Precinct 4, Chair of the Community Preservation Committee, and I move that the report of the Community Preservation Committee be received and the recommended votes contained in the um, report be before the meeting. All in favor, please say yes. yes. Okay. Um, Opposed? If you, so received. Thank you. Excuse me. Please read our report before we take up Article 57. Um, CPA is new. There's a lot of information to cover. We have extra reports at the back of the hall, and we also have the five projects on boards in um, the lobby. So if you want to look at them during the break, that would be great. Um, I have a great committee. Would they please stand? Mike Kerr, Vice Chair Eric Helmuth, um, Andrew Bengston. Did I do that right? Almost. Joanne Robinson, David Levy will be here. Um, Leslie, is, Leslie Mayer um, isn't here, but usually is and probably will be here. Um, Chuck Taroni is the representative from the um, Conservation Commission and he's working tonight. And Richard Murray, who's the representative from Arlington Housing, is sick. So thank you very much. Please come see us at the break. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Can I get one of those reports? Oh, yes. Mr. Carmen. Thank you, Mr. Mutter. Dean Carmen, Precinct 20, and a member of the Finance Committee. I move that the Finance Committee's report and recommended vote on Article 3 of the Special Town Meeting be received. All in favor? Yes. Opposed? It's so received. So I'll, I'll keep it brief. In the ungodly stack of paper we received tonight is the Finance Committee's um, report on Article 3, which we will take up on Wednesday night dealing with school capacity. 
The one thing I'll point out is in the middle of the report, and I think it was also emailed out, so there's a PDF link, is a link to the School Enrollment Task Force website for anybody who'll spend the next couple days reading up on the issue, trying to understand it. If you click on that link, it, it has a heck of a lot of information in there. So I would encourage you to take a look. Thanks. Thank you very much. Sir. John Cole, Chair of the Permanent Town Building Committee. Uh, I move that the report of the committee be received. All in favor? Yes. Opposed? So received. Mr. Cole, do you have anything to say? Do you have a clicker for me? Okay. Uh, oh, on the middle, middle podium, John. Middle podium. Okay, the report was at the back of the hall along with the associated budgets. I will not uh, indulge you to go through it. I would like to review some of the highlights of the past year and also show you some pictures of what we have accomplished with the monies that this body has entrusted to us. Uh, phase two of the fire station was completed in March. You can see now the interior is very bright. We have a new floor in there, new lighting, new doors, and it's really a lovely space. Um, nice day room for the fire, firemen, new circulation. Um, project was completed under budget with six and a half million. The report you have shows that we are about $2,000 under, but the fire chief assures me that through uh, his diligent buyout of some of the furniture and equipment, it's actually going to be 28000 We also achieved LEED Gold in, for this particular project, which is above uh, what the town meeting has asked us to do, and I would like to compliment our architect uh, Donovan and Sweeney for their efforts in that, in that regard. And lastly, I would like to pay tribute to the chief. He saved the town a ton of money, not only on this project, but before it on the Highland Station, through very diligent buying out of things under his control, and also by using uh, town employees and local contractors to fill out some of the gaps in the project that we were able to take out of the general contract and get done at a better price. And lastly, the chief has gathered and restored hundreds of artifacts to do with the history of the department. And they're now all on display, and I encourage you to go look at it. It is a veritable museum. Oh, and yes, he's now a permanent member of our committee, and we look forward to his uh, being our personal shopper. We are moving ahead with the community safety building. We did finish off the exterior portion last summer. There's been no change to the budget numbers on that since our last report. We're now working on the interior portion of the project. Uh, you can see in this photo that we changed out an old tile floor in the public lobby that was really quite deteriorated and have replaced it with terrazzo. We've also opened up that space and we will have uh, a display there of police department history in the near future. We are under our $7.65 million budget. Uh, we released 500,000 to the Capital Planning Commission in January, and I would expect in the next month or so, when the last piece of demolition is completed, that we will be in position to release additional dollars. And we expect to have it all done this fall. The Stratton School renovation is underway. Uh, the 3 million, 3.1 million that this body approved at the special town meeting in January uh, has been used to procure temporary modulars on site 
to house the students during the year of the renovation. Uh, they're currently in fabrication, and the first one should be on site uh, momentarily. Uh, we're significantly mm -hmm. under budget Mr. on Mr. Cole, you're wrapping up soon. You've got a few more minutes. All right, two seconds. All we're right. significantly under budget on the general contract for the renovation to the tune of about $2 million. We're going to keep that in the owner's contingency for the moment. When we get through the demolition phase, which is where we have our biggest risk, we anticipate releasing some of that money back to the town. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Jennifer Seuss, uh, Precinct 3, and also Chair of the School Committee. Um, I'd like to beg your indulgence and ask through the moderator if um, we could get slightly more time than the four minutes. What we've decided to do is give our presentation during the report section rather than the budget section. So how much time in total? Uh, seven minutes. For total All in favor minutes. of seven minutes for the School Committee to present the report, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. You have seven minutes. Great. Thank you. Uh, and I have oh, great thanks. Okay. Oh, can I can I can control that right for the clicker? Mr. Cole has it. Oh <laughs> Okay, great um, There are two stories I'd like to tell tonight and they are related The first is a story about our success Arlington public schools are great places for our children to learn and to grow and we continue to be high achieving district high achieving district Recently, the U.S. News & World Report came out with its rankings. I'm pleased to report that Arlington High School is ranked number 16 in the state, ahead of all but two of our comparable communities. We were also awarded the gold medal, which is a demarcation of the top 500 high schools in the country, roughly the top 2% in the nation. Uh, achieving gold is an indicator of two things. One, that our school does a good job at preparing students for college readiness and two, that we are serving all of our students. These are welcome kudos indeed. And these achievements come despite what I would politely call challenging facilities at the Arlington High School. Thanks to the town meeting vote in January, we are moving forward with the Stratton renovation. Stratton is on track to open with a newly renovated school at the start of 2017, which means that by September 2017, all seven of our elementary schools will have been renovated or rebuilt. Thanks also to town meeting vote in January, the modular classrooms at the Thompson School will be in place for the start of the 2016 school year. Okay. The Arlington Public Schools have succeeded despite spending less than our comparable communities. And these are the uh, comparison of Arlington to the town manager 12 communities, which are the communities that are most similar to us in sort of size and fiscal situation. In this chart, you will see that we are on the lower end of the middle in terms of spending and lower than the state average, which is all the way to the right. And here's how we performed on the state assessments against those same communities and the state average. Here you can see that we are on the higher end of the, middle, and of the middle in terms of performance. While more money is in fact needed, what these slides show is that taxpayers have gotten a good deal, a good return on their investment in the Arlington Public Schools. To learn more about the exciting things going on in the Arlington Public Schools, I encourage you to read and subscribe to the superintendent's newsletter, which is available on our website. The second story I'd like to tell you is about the financial stressors on our district. First is the stress placed on us by the state and federal mandates. In the past five years, Beacon Hill has passed 25 initiatives, laws that have had financial impact on our schools. Many of these initiatives are terrific, such as the Common Core State Standards, but nevertheless, they are unfunded. We do not get any extra state money. But the biggest financial stress on the Arlington Public Schools is the strain of our burgeoning enrollment. As many of you know, in the last four years, we've added 534 students in four years. This is bigger than any of our elementary schools. We are projected to add about that amount in the next five years. And after that, a couple hundred more. For a cumulative increase of over 30% from the 2005 levels. So the ones in the um, shaded are um, projected and the other ones are actuals. 
Arlington School population is increasing because our town is a wonderful place to live with nine really fabulous schools. So this is a good problem to have, but it is nevertheless a challenge. Only four years ago, we had some breathing room. Back then, only three of our nine schools were at or beyond capacity. And there was some hope that with redistricting, we could even those numbers out. And in fact, we did redistrict, and they did help a lot. But 534 students later, four years later, six of our nine schools are now at or above capacity. Even if we did massive redistricting tomorrow, where we dislocated a whole bunch of families all at once, we would still not solve our problem. At best, it would buy us two years. The fact is that we need to expand our capacity. Recently, the Board of Selectmen voted unanimously to place debt exclusion questions before the voters on June 14th, 2016. Let me just actually talk about that slide quickly. So the um, lines across are where we're at now, so you can see relative to where we're at now, whether it's going to increase in future years or go down. So we do have a slight decline in a couple of schools, and then, we, as you can probably see, massive increases uh, in the east. Okay. On June 14, 2016, Arlington is being asked to vote for four things. First, to expand our capacity at the middle school level by placing some of the students at Gibbs. Second, to pay for a small addition to Thompson to begin to address the huge enrollment growth in East Arlington. Third, to pay for the first step of the MSBA's, the Massachusetts School Building Authority's process to renovate or rebuild the Arlington High School. And fourth, to hopefully pay for a new minimum vocational school, and I know that's up in the air. In the next month, the school committee will decide whether Gibbs will be a townwide sixth grade or a second middle school. Um, I want to actually formally invite you now on Tuesday, May 24th, 7 o'clock, this room. We will have a public forum to talk about um, superintendent's recommendations, thoughts from the Audison teachers, and to hear your, as a community's thoughts and concerns. We invite you all to come. While I'm on the subject of Gibbs, I want to acknowledge the sadness that many of us feel over the fact that in reclaiming Gibbs for school use, we are also displacing organizations that have tremendous value to our community. I know that the town manager is working very hard to find a solution for the Arlington Center for the Arts. We support him in those efforts. Uh, tonight, the school committee voted to direct the superintendent to do what she can to find space over the summer, um, in, the summer in the school buildings for the ACA's camp. Um, over the last several months, it has been clear to us that Arlington values, and I suspect will support, both its schools and the arts. This shouldn't be an either-or proposition. I want to close by noting that Arlington has been very generous to its schools, and to say that we are extremely well served by Arlington's commitment to a long-range financial plan, and by its ability to judiciously adjust the plan when new conditions emerge. The enrollment growth we're experiencing is a challenge to be sure, but it is a challenge that we will meet as a community. I have confidence that we will, begin to, we will continue to build Arlington's future. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any other reports or committees? Ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm Anne LaRoyer from Precinct 17 and the chair of the Open Space Committee. And I'd like to move that uh, the Open Space Committee report be received. All in okay. favor? Aye. Your report is so received. Thank you. The committee's report is printed in the town's annual report. So I don't have extra copies here, but you can see the report in, the, um, in that uh, book. I do have copies for the moderator. Um, however, I wanted to speak tonight because I wanted to let you know that the town's open space and recreation plan um, uh, for 2015 through 2022 uh, was approved by the state's uh, Department of Conservation Services last September. That's part of the process that all town open space plans have to go through. Um, it was also previously adopted by the Arlington Redevelopment Board, which is the town's planning agency, and it has been uh, widely supported by many other town bodies, including the selectmen and the town manager. 
Um, we had a, a small number of copies printed because it's quite expensive. This is a copy of our, the main report. There's also a separate appendices, which is all part of the required, uh, sorry, part of the required protocol for the, the state um, planning process. But all of this material is on the town's website, um, on the Open Space Committee's um, page on the town website. And there were hard copies at the libraries and in most of the uh, town departments and offices here in town hall. So um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that also um, on the town website, on our page, um, was an effort that we took um, working with the GIS staff and the planning department to try to make some of this information more accessible to residents when they're walking around town to enjoy the open spaces. And so we, um, they helped us create an open space app. Uh, it's called Experiencing Arlington's Open Spaces. And this interactive uh, program is um, available so you can download it onto your smartphones or tablets or whatever you have. And it has um, some, bless you, uh, there's uh, maps and showing the trails within each of the um, 19 of the selected sites uh, around town includes um, selected parks, some of the water bodies, recreation areas. Um, so now that we finally have some nice weather out there, I hope you'll all get out and um, check out the application um, on the website and start to enjoy our wonderful open spaces. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any other reports or committees? Seeing none, Mr. Tosti. Move that Article Three be laid upon the table. All, all in favor of laying Article Three upon the table, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Article Three is upon the table. That brings us to Article Thirty Five, Appropriation Town Budgets. Mr. Tosti. Mr. Moderator. Uh, for the last two weeks, I've been saying, I've been telling you uh, that this would be the day or the night that we spend on the Minuteman budget and the Minuteman project, which is very important uh, to us. Therefore, in that line, I move that Article 35 through 42 be laid upon the table. Okay, we have a motion to lay Articles 35 through 42 upon the table. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Those articles are upon the table. That brings us to Article 42. 53, Minuteman Appropriations. Right. I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Steve DeCourcy, a member of the Finance Committee, who will be making the presentation on the Minuteman budget. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Steve DeCourcy, Precinct 2, and a member of the Finance Committee. Uh, before I start, I'm going to talk for a couple minutes and then in introduce Dr. Boquillen, who's the superintendent of the uh, Minuteman district. So I'd like to ask for 15 minutes total. There's a request of the um, Mr. DeCorsi for 15 minutes total for the Minuteman presentation. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. You have your 15 minutes, sir. Just Thank give you. Me a while to figure it out. Okay. Go ahead. You can start. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, as contained in the um, Finance Committee report, we are recommending favorable action and appropriation of $3 million 649, 349 for the Minuteman School District. And for you new town meeting members, voting this appropriation is the same as voting approval of the Minuteman budget. Um, I'm going to give you a, a couple of uh, highlights of the budget and then turn it over to Dr. Boquillen. Um, the way Minuteman works is all of the expenses of the budget are developed, all of the revenue sources other than member assessments are then reduced from that total and what is left is the in-district assessment. So this year, Dr. Bocolin will tell you that the budget has gone up 0.52%. It will be a total of 19.7 million. After the revenue estimates are, are subtracted, the in-district assessments are 10,943,739. That's actually an increase of 0.5%. Of um, Arlington voted last year, earlier this year, to um, go along with the amendment to the regional agreement. And as revised now, the annual assessment is based on a rolling average of assessments. 
applying that rolling average gets us to the assessment of 3,649,349. The number of students has actually gone down this year, but when you average it with the other three years, the, the drop isn't as dramatic as it would have been under the old arrangement. Last year's assessment was 4,010,950, and this year it will be 3,649,349. When 11 communities in the district vote to approve the, the budget, it, it's approved for everybody. Tonight, Needham may have already voted to be the 11th community. We may be the 12th. Um, but I want to turn it over to Dr. Boquilla now for a fuller presentation on the, uh, on the budget. Dr. Boquillan, um, Mr. Good, I think you have the wrong slideshow. We're in the regular, Article 3043. You can start, Dr. Boquillan, unless you're going to use that right away. Okay. So do we have the presentation? Here you go. Um, it, was, it was sent to everyone earlier today. Um, let me just, to, not to waste anybody's time, but uh, just a, a brief correction. Our overall budget is down by 0.5% from last year, although member town assessments are up by 0.5%. Uh, um, as Mr. DeCourcy mentioned, the overall regional agreement revisions have impacted this budget year and also how our assessments were calculated. Um, as I mentioned, overall, the budget is down 0.5 percent. Um, some of the key guidelines that were followed this year was that we were to have no increase in staffing at Minuteman. We leveled dollar-funded supplies and services, and we're also using our federal Perkins money all for equipment rather than for personnel. That's been a five-year transition plan. One of the biggest changes in our uh, revenue plan this year was a reduction in the amount of tuition that we collect from non-resident communities. Um, we had a, a reduction of about $900,000. Part of that is, in, 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 uh, is due to the fact that the school committee voted in June of 2014 to move towards a smaller sized school. In response to the concerns of the 16 member towns regarding the size of the school that's being proposed and will be discussed later on. We've made up much of that $972,000 decrease in member district tuition by increasing the contribution from our excess and deficiency account. That's similar to free cash for a town, but we've contributing $825,000 in this proposed budget for FY17. Overall, um, the budget impacts, we continue to fund our contractual uh, obligations. We're anticipating about a 5% increase in our health insurance, uh, general insurance about 3%. Uh, we do have some capital, operating capital needs that are described in this FY17 budget. Um, that are really for uh, repairs related to ADA compliance and health and safety issues. Our school bus contract, which we're in the first year of a new three-year contract, was up 8% over last year. Transportation is one of the dr cost drivers for Minuteman in a district that spans 35 miles across and 32 miles north and south. Our transportation costs per pupil are significant. We're going to be looking at alternatives to contracting in the way that we do. We're going to be analyzing for next year, including owning our own buses, uh, bidding our routes differently. Right now, our buses reside in Lexington and have to drive all the way to Lancaster and back twice a day. So there might be some ways to reduce that as we go forward. Overall, this budget um, reflects a reduction of staffing by 11.5 full-time equivalents. One administrative position is not being restored. Um, eight teaching positions and two and a half support positions. What we've done over the last couple of years as we're transitioning to a smaller school is when someone retires or moves to a different district, we don't replace that uh, position. We've been very fortunate that we have been able to uh, manage it in what I call a, a humane way. So there's been no active layoffs as we continue to right-size the building to that design enrollment approved by the school committee almost two years ago. 
Um, Arlington's enrollment, um, as Mr. DeCourcy mentioned, for this fiscal year is 120, down from 152 in 2014, which is down from 165 from 13. The four-year rolling average is really meant to take some of the valleys and peaks out of these uh, assessments. Um, overall, our budget again is 19.7 million. Um, our estimated revenue plan, 10.9 million from our member district communities. Chapter 78, we're getting about 2.1 million. We expect a transportation reimbursement of about 900,000. Um, tuition, total tuition revenue is 4.4 million. We're going to be collecting some tuition next year as well. And again, 825,000 from our excess and deficiency account, um, which brings the Arlington assessment for FY17 to 3.6 million, down about 361,000 from FY16. Thank you. Oh, huh. okay. it's bad. So you could have told me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing a good job, so. All right. So if you want to go through your chart, go for it. You have seven All right, minutes. So uh, this shows the enrollment over the last couple of years. That shows our freshman enrollment. What it doesn't show is our applications for next year, which is up about 15% from our member towns. Um, this is the enrollment, uh, what I was just referring to. This is the Arlington comparison of the assessment from last year to this year. And you all have this on your, your chair as well. But you can see the, um, uh, the overall enrollment um, number that's being used is based upon that four-year rolling average of 135. And the assessment at 3.6 million. This is a look at our overall budget using the state fund codes. Um, you'll see a reduction of 373,000. That's really in the area of personnel. And you'll see the asset and acquisition line item is down 433,000. And our debt service is up 596,000. What we've done is planned for 500,000 to be paid on the bond for the new building should the new building be fully approved. If it's not fully approved, we would be moving that to some of the projects that I, I described. So we have, um, we've had to plan for two scenarios going forward. And this is the revenue plan I reviewed. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Jameson. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jameson, Precinct 12. Um, I thank the superintendent for his uh, vigilant uh, working on all the matters related to the Minutemen. I, I had one question that um, you, you mentioned it again, you, and you mentioned it in the Saturday, the Sunday session, um, applications to the school which you anticipate also the new building will increase. What happens, do, do children not get uh, allowed to attend? Or if Are, you have more applicants than spots, how does that work? Well, we haven't enjoyed that situation for a while, but in, in a, a situation where there is over-enrollment, um, our admissions policy speaks to how that is to handle. But basically, all member town applications um, are considered and those applicants are accepted prior to any out-of-district students being accepted. So then some of the students that are accepted decide not to attend? Is Correct. That okay. That, okay. Yeah. And the other question I had, um, what is the status of your um, employee retirement fund? Is that fully vested or not? And also the other post-employment benefit, the health care portion of that, which is the, the next big thing Great. in the fund. Yeah, this budget uh, continues to fund our OPEB liabilities with about $50,000. I think it's the same that we did last year. So we have begun to fund that liability. Um, as far as the Minuteman retirement, we're funded at about 95% um, in that. It's one of the highest funded retirement systems in the state at this point. I commend you on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Deist?
Thank you for, for your presentation. Um, I would like to know a little bit, if I could please, about how you're handling special education and the size of the special agent, special agent, how much of your budget is involved with special education, if I may ask? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, um, Minuteman en enjoys one of the highest percentage of students on special ed plans of any school in the Commonwealth. 47% of our students are receiving some services through an IEP in order for them to access the curriculum. Again, when we look at our budget as a percentage of the total, about 14% of our budget is uh, dedicated to providing those services so the students can access the curriculum more fully. The academic curriculum as well as the vocational technical curriculum. And I'm proud to report that this year um, our, we had 100% MCAS uh, passing rate on the first try for English language arts and 97% on the first try for math, 100% pass first try chemistry and biology as well. So our students do very well at Minuteman who are receiving additional services to access the curriculum. And it's one of our cost drivers as well as transportation. Thank you. Um, Mr. Schlickman. Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9. I see in the presentation that uh, the fiscal 17 transportation amount for Arlington is $228,859. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, what wasn't a condition of regionalization by the state that if we regionalize, they would provide 100% of transportation for a regional school district? You know, I heard that myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they've ever done it. Uh, uh, they, they did it once upon a time, but the, the, this is a magical set of words called subject to appropriation. And the legislature habitually underfunds this account. Now, most of the towns that are in academic regions, particularly further west, squawk about the lack of full funding for regional school transportation on a regular basis. It's something that doesn't hit our radar here in Arlington very often because most of our kids walk to school. But this is a large amount of money that we should not be paying because the state made a commitment when we regionalized to fully fund regional school transportation. So that if you hear any words being directed to the legislature about their failure to fully fund regional school transportation, yes, it impacts us too. We should be vigilant on this issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Weber. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Janice Weber, Precinct 21. I'd just like to ask the superintendent if they have a robotics um, department in Minuteman. Robotics? Yes, we do. Robotics Good. and Automation is a Chapter 74 approved program. Great, because that's one of the most upcoming things that we need to have in our schools. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to um, discuss the Minuteman budget? Seeing none, um, we'll take up the vote. We have before us the recommended vote of the Finance Committee for the Minuteman Appropriation for their annual budget, $3,649,349. Soon as you're ready, Mr. Lathwood. Please wait for the green light to go on before you vote. When it comes on, vote one for yes, two for no. Well, that's not the running tab. <laughs> Switching issue. Oh, I see the boss isn't here. Okay, want us to, well, we don't even have a clock. Okay, here's our clock. Do you want us to vote again? One for yes, two for no. Vote one yes for the Minuteman appropriation, two for no. Yeah. 
It is approved 195 in the positive, two in the negative. Three abstentions. 195 to two. It's a vote, and I so declare it. That ends Article 43. Mr. Tosti. Fellow town meeting members, I move to adjourn the annual town meeting until Article 6 of the special town meeting is complete. All in favor of adjourning the regular town meeting to go into the special town meeting, Article 6, please say yes. 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 Opposed? Okay, we are in now town meeting. Re annual town meeting is now adjourned. We are now in the special town meeting. We have Article 6 before us, Minimum Regional Vocational Bond Authorization. Okay, the handout was made uh, last week. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to do it. Um, the article um, proposed motion in the, this handout, the original, is the motion of the Finance Committee. There was another handout this, on your seats today. Uh, please ignore that and go with the original motion. If you only have the new handout, cross out everything after Proposition 2 and a half. Six. So, so we got one last week, dated, no date, two, page, two pages with a whole bunch of other pages. That's the one we're doing. The one we received today is so much recycling. Or you can use the back for ignore scrap the paper. Amendment. Um, ignore the amendment. Okay. I'd like to introduce Steve DeCourcy, who will give the presentation for the Finance Committee. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Mr. Moderator, for this presentation, I'm going to speak for a few minutes once again, and then I will introduce Dr. Boquillen, who will be making a more extensive presentation. Um, just out of an abundance of caution, I'd like to request 25 minutes. Okay, we have a request for 25 minutes for the Minute Man bonding issue. All in favor, please say yes. 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 Opposed? Oh, we're going to do an electronic vote. The chair's in doubt. All in favor of giving them 25 minutes, please vote yes as soon as Mr. Lathwood's ready. And if you don't want to give them additional time, vote no. Okay, go ahead. One for yes, additional time. Two, no, you do not want them to have additional time. It's 143 in the pos 134 in the positive, 59 in the negative. You have your additional time, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, town meeting members, in the, uh, the vote that Mr. Tosti just referred to, the recommended vote of the Finance Committee is for approval of the borrowing authorized by the Minuteman Vocational District. It's a contingent vote um, at the end of the vote. It's contingent upon the, the approval conditioned upon the successful vote of the town in the debt exclusion, which would take place on June 14th. Um, I have some slides that I want to run through, and then I will turn it over to Dr. Boquillen. I've been on the Finance Committee since 1994, and I'd say for the first five years, we had nothing but unanimous votes. Since then, it's been a, a little bit more contested. That isn't a typo on page five of the Finance Committee report, it was a 10 to 8 vote in favor of the authorization. And it just really bespeaks how difficult this issue has been for, for those of us who have studied it and uh, on, on both sides of the issue, frankly. Um, the vote here tonight, I just want to clarify, the Chapter 71, Section 16D provides a mechanism where if a regional school committee votes for debt authorization, it then goes to all of the member communities um, within that district. If one member of the, of the district votes disapproval of the request, then the request basically um, can, cannot be brought forward. Um, last Wednesday, Belmont voted to disapprove the request by Minuteman. So we're here before you tonight really on an informational, for, for an informational vote on, on this issue. Um, 
there are 16 communities in the district. Six are going to leave the district right now. 16 communities will be voting on this authorization. But with Belmont's vote, it effectively ends the, the request of the Minuteman School Committee. And th there'll be other options that Dr. Buquillen will speak about. But we did want to bring it before town meeting and, and, and get town meetings um, voice heard on this issue. So I, I have a um, brief overview, and I'll turn it over. The total cost of the project, as Dr. Boquillen will um, present for new schools, $145 million. The reimbursement from the state is 44.75% of eligible costs. The 30.46% is projected for um, total costs. But there are some, pro some costs within that $145 million that aren't eligible for reimbursement. What that leaves is $100.9 million that the district has to absorb both through member communities and out of district communities. Minuteman, as part of their due diligence, um, studied both a renovation and new construction. The new construction, as I just said, is roughly 145 million. Their estimate of the renovation is 105 million. Um, I just want to let you know I put an asterisk next to that because there's been a number of questions as to what's included in that number of $105 million. Um, one thing I will say is their estimate is that amount. That is only to redo the building. Um, you'll hear from Dr. Boquillen that the building as constructed in the mid-70s no longer fits the educational needs of, of a 21st century vocational education. And so even if this amount or something close to it was spent, there are millions of dollars that they estimate on top of that that would be needed to, to both right-size the facility and also make it um, more compatible with, with the educational needs of today's vocational students. Now I want to get to just some of the, the difficulties that we had. And as a, as a group with the Finance Committee, we determined that, that the risk of not going forward outweighed the risks of, of, of doing nothing at this point. And a couple of the comparisons that I want to make is that if the project were approved and it went the MSBA route, the project would be entitled to the state reimbursement that I talked about, the 44.75%. If, on the other hand, the property was renovated, there's no reimbursement. Okay, so that's, that's a 40 to $45 million issue. The second point, and again, this, Dr. Bocone will go through this in more detail, we have right now over 200 out-of-district students in, in the Minuteman District. Um, it's projected that with a new school, 628 students, there'll be approximately 170 out-of-district out students. Right now, the out-of-district students don't pay any capital costs, or their communities don't pay any capital costs. With a new building, however, Minuteman would be entitled to charge a capital fee to those out-of-district students. And again, as I said in the budget presentation, any other revenue source reduces the in-district assessment. It also would reduce the capital costs um, to the in-district communities. This is where we are now. This table shows the number of students in Minuteman, both in-district and out-of-district. Uh, 396 in-district, 277 out-of-district. Again, the projected enrollment and what the building has been approved for um, is an enrollment of 628 students. Minuteman has projected that if, if the building were to be built, the in-district population would be about 458. Arlington would be about 155 of that. Again, it's projections. And out of district would be 170. And I just illustrate this because you're gonna hear a lot about Minuteman's population decreasing um, from other speakers. And, and there's no question that the numbers have come down but even from where we are, where Minuteman is today, what's being projected for years is, is, is a lower enrollment. So the fact that it's going down isn't necessarily inconsistent with the request for a new building. But the enrollment figures really are, are, the heart, are at the heart of the risk question too, because um, it's all about seats with, with Minuteman. Because again, your operating assessments are based on enrollment, the capital assessments are based on enrollment. And so to the extent that Arlington, which is right now about a third of the in-district uh, population, that number goes down, our, our assessment goes down. And, and so 
the risk that we have is that the out of district number of 170, if that goes down to zero, we're responsible for a third of all the capital costs, okay? And there's no reimbursement, no capital fee. So it's a big risk. Um, and, and so that's, that's the difficulty. But again, you have to weigh that with the, the fact that there's no reimbursement if you don't go forward, there's no capital fee, and I have to think, and others who voted along with me here, that, it, that a new building will attract students to, to the facility. So whether we go forward or not, we're gonna be a member of this district and we're gonna be responsible for costs. So I just wanted to point that out on the, the enrollment basis. This again gets to the heart of the risk issue. Um, the estimated first year debt service. Again, this Minuteman has come up with a projection of what the total debt service would be if the project goes forward. It's $5.3 million. The in-district portion of that would be 3.8, 84.59 per student. The out-of-district would be 84.72. And for those town meeting members who remember years ago, the problems that we had with Minuteman with choice students who Communities would send their students to Minuteman and they'd pay $5,000 and communities would pay the difference between $5,000 and $15,000 or $14,000 to subsidize the out of district students. There is an equity here that's being proposed through the capital fee. And, and again, there's a risk. Maybe Minuteman doesn't get 170 students out of district. Maybe they don't get to 458. But it's, it's the type of thing we can't predict what's, what's going to happen. We, we do know that we have a building that was built in 1974, opened in 1974, um, that I think everybody who's looked at it agrees is in, is in need of an upgrade, serious upgrade. And so the question then becomes, do you take the risk and accept the reimbursement from the state and, and, and work to move forward um, and, and, and work with the other communities? Or do you go back to the drawing board and, and, and look for other alternatives, all the while paying a third of all the operating costs, paying a third of any uh, capital projects, frankly, that, that need to be undertaken? Um, because again, we'll be responsible for, for that. We're not getting out of the district. We're gonna be a, within the district for the foreseeable future. So when you look at this, I ask you to look at it, not as an outsider, but, but realize that we're in the agreement no matter what happens here and we're responsible for costs and which way may be the better way to, um, to move forward. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Boquillen, um, again, who has a more extensive presentation. Uh, thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Uh, do you have the Miniman presentation? Now? And along with all the other uh, seat padding you have, there was a Minuteman presentation there on this as well. Thank you. Uh, 15 minutes. So just an overview quickly. We were established in 1970, as many of you know. We provide academic coursework as well as career and technical education. We believe this gives our students a competitive advantage in the new global economy. This project at a high altitude view is uh, designed around 628, uh, 257,000 square feet. The construction budget is about 119 million. The overall costs are about a 145. As again, as Steve said, um, the reimbursement rate is um, as you see there. Um, this is a rendering of the project, but let me just talk a little bit about the project for a few minutes. Um, the need is pretty obvious. Anyone who's been there or who has taken the time to look at our engineering reports that have been online will see the need for something needs to be done at Minuteman. Um, over the last years, we've spent quite a bit of money just repairing and, and keeping things going. We did invest in a new boiler for energy efficiency a few years back. The New England Association of Schools and Colleges put Minuteman on warning status solely because of the facility. Um, use. So there is, I don't think the need is questioned. I think the, what's been questioned is why the new building and why not some other um, alternative and I can talk to that. The MSBA process which you're involved in now with a number of different school projects that are all very important and I appreciate the school committee's um, comment that we have all of our schools to be concerned with and I want you to have a new 
high school. I want you to have the best schools you can for the students that are there, and I want to have the best Minuteman we can for the Arlington students that attend. We submitted our statement of interest in November of 2008. 2008. We were offered entry into the process a year later. We are the longest running feasibility study in the history of the MSBA. MSBA has only been in existence 10 years, and we've been there about eight with them, which they remind me every time I see them. I think we send each other holiday cards now. Um, so basically what MSBA required us to do was to investigate a number of options thoroughly with the design team, which includes architects, engineers of a variety of, of sorts. We looked at not only a repair-only option, but a renovation, renovation addition, and new construction options for two sized schools when we began. One size school was 435, and the other size school was 800. Um, MSBA evaluated the preferred solution that was a new school at a lower enrollment and approved it unanimously. Um, they felt that building the, a school of about 628 was about the smallest school they would approve. We would be able to offer the kind of programming we've been offering and we would be able to address the educational programming for years to come by really being reflective of what does a flexible design look like. These are some of the options that were um, uh, presented to the MSBA about a year ago. And you can see from this, and I apologize, it's, I can't even read this handout here, but um, these options over on the uh, left-hand side, I'll just forgive my back for a moment, but I want to make sure I'm and this is online and it was sent to you electronically as well. Option A was for a renovation of 435. Option B was new 435. And you can go on down to option H, which was what was submitted to the MSBA of a new school for 628. And the estimated total cost for these projects, you can see option B, which is a new school for 435, was estimated at $143 million. So the, the, the economies of scale of going smaller aren't really reflected in what you spend on a building. And obviously renovation to a large school like Minuteman right now that was designed for well over 1,000, a renovation of that vintage, you're going to get into problems and it drives the costs up because of the materials that you find and the remediation that may need to be happening. So the goals of our project um, for the MSBA project was to implement a research-based, data-driven academy model. We want to protect our accreditation. It's very important to parents and families that we maintain our accreditation. We want to provide a facility that continues to motivate students and help them find their passion. We want to intensify some of our programming and offering new programs, innovative programs, and we want to create a campus feel that's compelling and attractive to all. This is a high level, obviously, overview of the new facility. You can see that it's on the left-hand side. That's all in the town of, of Lincoln. Um, the far, you know, there's a yellow, uh, how does this work? There we go. This little line here is the border between Lexington and Lincoln. This is where the school currently is. We do have one athletic field down in here that's restored, but all this area becomes available we hope for athletic fields and possibly some other potential development that could uh, benefit the project. This is a look at our academy model. The academy model is really very simply defined. It's a small group of teachers from diverse areas of the school caring for the student in a, a, a much more intensive way than we're able to in a larger academy model. It's sort of a school within a school. And you can see that we have the engineering trades Academy as well as the Life Sciences and Services Academy. We're offering 16 vocational technical programs, providing the opportunity for students to, uh, for 19 career majors. Two new programs that are offered in this configuration is advanced manufacturing, which we've combined with metal fabrication, and multimedia engineering. Some of the considerations of an academy model is that the school is a small school with flexible spacing. Uh, similar curricula is near one another in the building. We have collaborative learning spaces and project-based learning spaces. Uh, we're supporting workforce education priorities in the selection of programming 
and we're trying to enhance our ability to support all students in this design. Because of the large number of special ed students, there are some unique spaces in here which are designed around continuing to deliver those um, services. We're looking at modern technical labs, uh, meeting industry standards. This is an important consideration when you build a vocational technical school. You're building a high school, but you're also building very unique spaces that must uh, maintain industry credentialing. Our students achieve industry credentials. Our teachers are licensed in the fields that they're trained in, and they, our spaces must reflect those real-world training facilities. So think about a biotech space at Minuteman that must have a, a clean lab area. Think about the advanced manufacturing and all the power equipments, the ventilation requirements, all very unique spaces. We continue to offer services to the public in uh, cosmetology, in child, early childhood services, automotive, and a culinary arts and hospitality area. Getting natural light into the building was a concern of students as well as staff. We have some project-based learning spaces that are unique where within each academy, students and teachers from the different programs within each academy, including the academic teachers, work on projects. Those projects need a place to reside and be um, sustained. We continue to operate um, public meeting spaces. Uh, one of the things our business partners told us was that we, there are not enough areas for them to meet to provide training to their employees, and we're looking at providing that in this space as well. And then providing students their own space. I've got to mention that our, my students, I involved the students in the design and planning of this about two years ago. I've had um, representatives from each class, the sophomores, juniors, and seniors, who spent hours with myself, with the design team. They were able to solve problems that the designers could not. Um, they were able to see things from the lens of a student. They'd say, Dr. B, we know where all these kids hang out. We know every part of this building, and this is what we want in a new building. Now, these kids committed their time, their energy, um, their intellect, even though they were going to never step foot in it themselves. That's how committed they were to seeing a new Minuteman that's going to serve kids following them. I'm just so impressed with their ability to give and to make sure that their ideas were heard. It was one of the most satisfying things about this entire eight years, other than Arlington approving it tonight, of course. <laughs> so some of the things about vocational technical schools that I mentioned, they're larger than a traditional high school. Those complex spaces must be provided. The square footage requirements and formulas that the MSBA puts out are really designed around classroom-based schools. You know, they, they give you about a 225 square feet per child in a regular academic high school. But for a vocational school, you have to add on top of that the minimum requirements for shop spaces that have been defined by the Department of Ed. And if you took all our shop spaces, that adds another 150 square foot per pupil. And that does not include tool storage, materials and supplies, and related rooms. So this building, which is about 409 square feet per student, is more than a traditional high school, but there's a very good reason for it. So when we look at our overall expenses, this might be more appropriate in my budget presentation, but I remind folks that <coughs> staffing a vocational technical high school, we have two full staffs, uh, full academic staff as well as a uh, vocational technical staff, a large number of special ed staff, our transportation costs and special ed costs are higher. This new school, as we begin to shrink it, our operating budget will continue to go down. We're down a half a percent now. We're anticipating um, that or more next year as some of the programs that will no longer be operating um, begin to close. We're required to run those programs to the last senior graduates. And so we're carrying a lot more staff than we will in a new building. We believe enrollment will increase. Why? Because we've, had a, we've seen it already. We're at the end of our first year of a, a new marketing, recruitment, and retention program. Our applications at this point in time are up 15% over all of last year. 
We've seen increasing elementary enrollment in member towns, including Arlington, as you heard from the school committee. We're seeing that in Belmont, Lexington, and Concord as well. We're seeing increased interest in career and technical education as confirmed by our middle school guidance staff throughout the district. We had a survey done back August which showed uh, tremendous support for this new project. 68.5% of district voters approved the project, approved of it. Only 8.5% were against it. We believe that parents are beginning to see the return on investment in career and technical education in a high school experience is very valuable for helping their students find purpose when they move into college and choose a major. They have an understanding of what they can do, what they're good at. This is just some of the data from the survey that we did with our middle school guidance counselors across all 16 towns. Um, 71 to 81 percent felt that the need for vocational education was being recognized, that the applications would increase over the next five years, that parents were beginning to see a need for vocational education. We also wanted to get a sense of their attitudes towards Minuteman. And this was a sea change from 10 years ago, where it was really difficult to understand what our middle school guidance counselors were aware of when it came to vocational technical education. But 100% of those responding, and the response was about 55% of the guidance counselors, 100% felt that vocational technical education was a good foundation for college. Ten years ago, the, the mindset was, if you go to a vocational school, you're not going to college. That has changed dramatically. The new costs for the building are in line with other costs. You, there's only been three other vocational schools built in the last ten years in Massachusetts. And the MSBA has really um, admitted, I guess, or asked us for help in how they go about this. But in this cost per square foot, Minuteman is in the range of the others. Putnam Vocational School um, uh, in Springfield, Massachusetts, Essex Aggie, which was a combination of the Agricultural High School, Peabody Vocational School, and North Shore. And I got to say, of those three schools that have completed above Minuteman there, within a year of opening, they all had waiting lists from their member towns of hundreds of kids. And we see this across the Commonwealth when new schools are built. There is a cost to doing nothing. We'll lose about $44 million in state funds, capital fees, our accreditation could be lost. Uncertainty about our project is going to hinder our enrollment. And we'll still need to spend perhaps up to $100 million, but even if we're off that number by $20 million, we're going to have to spend a lot of money on a building that's not going to be matched to the educational program uh, needs that we see now. And if we start to renovate the building, there are triggers that come into play. If you spend over 30% of your budget on a renovation, you have to bring the whole building up to code. This slide, I believe, Mr. DeCourcy went over. Some of the things about renovating that are unknowns, we'd have to get back into the process with MSBA. That could take years. Um, we'd need to begin all over uh, our feasibility study. The new school costs and tax impacts, we cannot exceed that amount. About we 30 have to bring seconds. it in on budget. For Arlington, we're estimating about $75 for the median homeowner. I know if we use the average homeowner, it's about $85, um, and, but that's the cost. Next steps, once we get approval, and once I talk to the MSBA about Belmont's vote, we'll move on and uh, work with you going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Foskett. I prepared I a handout Foskett. Uh, Al, for Al, you. Al. Al. I called Charlie. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought. <laughs> sorry. Don't do it. Gordy. Tosti, Tosti. I mean, they all sound the same. Thank you, Mr. Moderator Charles Foskett, Precinct 8. I'm standing before you as a town meeting member from Precinct 8 and not as a representative of either the Finance Committee or the Capital Planning Committee. And I um, would like to ask the meeting if I could have 
uh, 10 minutes as opposed to the normal seven because of the complexity of this subject. Okay, Mr. Foskett's requesting 10 minutes total time. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? I believe you have 10 minutes, sir. Thank, thank you very much. So, <clears throat> um, where do I point this thing to? Uh, so, I stand before you to ask your support in opposing this project. And I want to emphasize at the outset that this is not representative of any specific animosity towards Miniman High School or to its students or to the staff, but it's towards the project itself. I think we have to vote no on Article 6 for two reasons. First of all, on the issues, and secondly, on the form of the article. On the key issues, I think the cost is too high, the risk is too high, and the project itself is unfair. If you look at this uh, slide behind me, you see on the right hand, the, the cap in the graph, you see the, the red bar is the capital cost per student for the um, Miniman project. The blue bars are the Arlington Middle School project, the Thompson Elementary School addition, and Arlington High School's project. Um, the, the, you can see the dramatic difference in the capital cost per student. And we have, uh, this year, as uh, Dr. McQuillan pointed out, only 120 students from Arlington. And we're talking about a, assuming a cost of $33 million, or around $229,000 per student when you uh, look at the four-year average. The four-year average is 144 students. Minuteman, at over $25,000 a year, is either the most expensive or one of the most expensive vocational ed schools in the state on an operating basis. At a minimum, this project of one, will add $1.2 million in capital costs, and for 120 students, that's $10,000 a year more to the student, uh, per student cost. Compared to, to the prices and costs we have for our students in the Arlington Public School System, this is not a, a fair situation, and it's not fair to the Arlington taxpayers. Here is a, a, a depiction of what the annual debt service is per student in Arlington versus in the um, Minuteman District. The Minuteman District is 500% higher per student. Now, it's, on the right-hand side, I'm showing a capital cost of $2,063 per student. Today, the capital cost per student in Arlington is about $600. This $2,000 is the estimate of the cost in 2020 after we've completed the middle school expansion, after we've added on to the Thompson, and after we've completed a, a new Arlington High School. After all of those projects are over, we still have a five to one ratio in the capital cost per student uh, of, of Minuteman compared to that of Arlington. So my argument to you is that this is just too expensive. Yeah. I also would argue that despite the presentation given by um, Dr. McQuillan and, and Mr. DeCourcy uh, previously, if you look into and read the material on the Minuteman website, you'll find out that the uh, diligence applied to looking at alternatives was, uh, at, the, at the very least, light. You, didn't, you don't see the sort of uh, comparison that the Arlington Public School System recently did between the Gibbs and the Otteson with the HMFH architects. And I show you an example here where these uh, back-of-the-envelope calculations were escalated at 6% a year when the Department of Revenue cost escalation parameters are between 2 and 3% a year. If you and I were getting 6% a year in our bank accounts, we'd be happy campers. That difference between 3% and 6% just on this, this one example, which I've taken from the Minuteman documentation, has a, increases the cost of one version of the project by $9 million, or 16%, six, six per, which is pretty substantial. The big risk, as Mr. DeCourcy pointed out, 
is in Roman. You see on the chart on the right, 16, 10, and 9 town in Roman history. The first thing I want to point out is that six towns are leaving the district. So the, we're starting off uh, not with 398 students, but with 357 students because the departing towns are taking away that balance. If you, so that you, you'd go from the, the red line to the blue line with the 10, years, uh, with the 10 towns in the, in the uh, system. If you go then take, take Arlington out, you see that the remaining population is around 200, 250 students. Now, <coughs> the 10-year the, the, the decline in the 10 towns has been 19% a year. But Arlington's decline, on, using these four-year rolling averages, is only 13%. That means the other nine towns that we're relying upon to help absorb this huge cost are declining at a faster rate than we are, almost twice as fast as we are. So I think what I want to highlight here is that Miniman's predicting 458 enrollment from member towns. Right now, we're sitting at 357. So that's a 28% increase that they would have to get from member towns. In addition, the Department of Elementary and, and uh, Secondary Education has set new barriers for the recruiting of ninth graders and the application of an $8,500 or $9,500 a year capital cost to out-of-district students is not going to attract students. My experience is when you raise the price on something, generally speaking, people buy less of it. And I think that's going to happen here. And the history points to the fact that the enrollment has been declining for 10 years. <coughs> so. Um, you have in your seats this, this sheet that says um, why we must veto Minuteman's special town meeting article 6. I've just given you problems with the issues, the high cost, the risk, the lack of fairness. But there's also a fundamental flaw in the article. The Board of Selectmen did not call for a debt exclusion vote within 60 days of Minuteman asking for a bond authorization. So that, that means that if, if we vote the contingent article that was presented by the Finance Committee and we go forward and don't vote for a debt exclusion, a town that has supported it could challenge us. The Minuteman District could challenge us because our negative vote occurred after the 60-day time period. So I think that the, the, the fundamental, fundamental article is flawed, flawed because we missed this 60-day window. There's no mention in the article about um, contingent approval or the opinion of town council or the opinion of bond council. The law says that if the bond request is not vetoed within 60 days, that bond may not go forward. So I think the town of Arlington, if, if it turns out that we don't support a debt exclusion, we're at the risk for absorbing 1.2 million to one, maybe 1.8 or even $2 million in cost for the next 30 years coming out of our non-exempt budget. So I strongly urge you for two, two reasons. First, for the um, three issues that I mentioned before, the exorbitant cost, uh, the um, lack of fairness, the declining, the risk from declining student enrollment, and because the article itself is flawed, I strongly urge you to support the substitute motion and veto uh, the, the request uh, for, uh, for the uh, project in uh, Minuteman School. Thank you. We get a second on your motion. Less than, uh, less than 10 minutes. Thank you. OK, let's take our seven minute break. What's your point of order, sir? Uh, Timor Yon, Fire Precinct 7. Uh, regarding the Article 6 substitute motion that was moved and seconded, dated May 9th, does it comply with the 48-hour rule? I'm, I'm looking at that motion. Um, I've, in my opinion, it, it's small enough in that all it really is changing is the first line from approves, besides all the other verbiage after the two of them, they're going from approves the borrowing, and he's saying disapproves and rejects. 
So in my opinion, it, it's close enough to the original that it can be, plus of the compressed time frame that we've had on this issue with the Belmont just declining last week. He didn't have a chance to get it to us within 48 hours. So as opposed to postponing the whole issue until Wednesday, and the small enough change in it, I'm going to allow it in based on those two factors. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, first off, I want to report that earlier tonight, Needham unanimously approved this uh, building project, which added another town to the yes column. Uh, in, ad I'll, in addition to Superintendent Ed Buquillen with yeah. us tonight, we have yeah. Kevin Mahoney, who's the Assistant Superintendent, uh, Ford Spaulding as the Chairman of the Minuteman School Building Committee. Arlington's recently appointed member to that committee is Nawaf Kaba and Sue Scheffler, who are people who are available for, uh, here for, with questions. I wanted to point out that uh, the ta the, there's a Minuteman task force that the Board of Selectmen approved, uh, appointed to study this question because we knew it was going to be a difficult uh, question. Uh, the Minuteman that com consisted of two selectmen, two school committee members, superintendent of schools, uh, the town manager, member of the permanent town building committee, um, and oh, uh, the member of the uh, the a couple uh, and a member from Minuteman. I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. Uh, that group approved this pro or recommended approval on this project eight to one. Before I give my presentation, which I assure you I'm not asking for extra time. I just wanted to touch on one of the arguments that uh, Mr. Foskett made just before the break, which is related to the bond council. And one of the arguments, or related to the, whether or not uh, we can, so we're taking a vote tonight that's inside the 60 days that's mandated by the state law. The override on June 14th is out of the 60 days. And the case, I believe that if I understood Mr. Foskett correctly, the case that he's making is that because it's outside of the June 14th date, that if that is disapproved, like if we, our voters disapprove that on June 14th, that, uh, that we could still be forced to pay for it and the bonds would still go forward. One of the things, uh, uh, the, the reason that that argument isn't, ac isn't correct or why, is that, and why we can take the vote tonight and depend on the June 14th vote is because those bonds can only be issued with approval of bond council. Bond Council is a guy by, by, named by Mr. Manley. Mr. Manley does everybody's bonds. He does Minuteman's bonds. He does Lexington's bonds. He does Arlington's bonds. And Mr. Manley says, in writing, which is available to all of us and has been passed out to the Finance Committee and we can distribute it as necessary, uh, if that override fails on June 14th, I will not issue those bonds. And so that is why we don't, I'm not, the structural failure that Charlie is concerned about, I am not, Mr. Fosk is concerned about, I am not concerned about. Uh, and so I want to talk about, and I'm going to touch on some of his other issues, but I'm also going to make a few points of my own and bring back some of the points that uh, Mr. DeCourcy and um, Superintendent Bukillan made. I want to talk about outcomes, not the paths we get there, but what are the outcomes that we're going to get? One of the classes of outcomes is if we participate in the building. There's a good outcome, which is essentially what you've seen planned. It comes out as the costs that we expect. There's a great outcome that could happen, which is another town joins, that our costs become lower. Watertown joins, Waltham joins, Medford joins, Everett joins, something like that. The negative outcome would be as if the district begins to wither. I'm going to cover that one a little bit later. The other class of outcomes is the no build. This is where we block the outcome, where we block the building. From, by voting no tonight, we block that building from being built. I'm going to start from the bottom. All of the things that are in the other category, are, they're, they're hopeful, but they're mirages. Everything that we could think of over the last seven years has been evaluated in terms of dissolving the district, reconstituting it, like getting Waltham to build a school with us. They're all just distractions. I appreciate that many people, including myself, get very creative when faced with a difficult problem, but we're at a place tonight where there really is only one option left on the table. Going back to the top, the no-build option, the cheap renovation, I've come to believe that that is simply a mirage and it doesn't exist. Uh, one of the members of our permanent town building committee, Alan Reedy, was a member of this Minuteman task force, and he explained it this way. He said, sure, you can do the roof for $3 million, and then you can do this project for a few million dollars, and then you can do this project for a few million dollars, but you've got a really old building, 
And, you have, and once you hit this point, then you've got the 8A restrictions, and then you have to, like in the code violations, and then you have to spend a lot more money. There is no cheap option available to us. So we're, that leaves us with the middle option, which is expensive renovation. So I want to compare like these four possible scenarios in front of you. Starting in the upper left, the yellow, the, the left-hand column is essentially what's being proposed on the paper of what could happen with this building. The yellow is the amount of money that the state is contributing. The gray is what's coming from out-of-district students. The orange is what's coming from other members of our district. And the blue is what's coming from Arlington. It's really about 27 million because we expect the out-of-district money to come in. The second column is if the out-of-district money doesn't appear. It means we completely fill the district with in-district students, which would mean, of course, that Arlington's enrollment has gone up dramatically. In that case, you can, we spend the 33 million, and the, and the state covers the top of it. Now I have what I call imaginary renovation A and imaginary reno renovation B. I don't really know what the costs of those are going to be. There's, there's too much, there's a lot more study that would have to happen. One of them is a $60 million column, the next one is $90 million. And of those, we'd pay 20 and 30. And so that right hand column, the, the blue box, the amount that Arlington would pay is 30 million, which is more than what we'd be paying in that left hand column. And now I want to refer you just to what the overall height of this is. You get what you pay for. And I want, with our 20 or 25 to $33 million, I want to buy the left hand column. I don't want to buy the right hand column. I'll also leave it to you to ask. Um, one, another member of the, uh, the task force, Paul Schlickman, who, if he will tell you what the problems with the other building, what the renovated building version would be. I'm not worried about the enrollments because the school, or I am worried about the enrollments. Legitimate people can worry about the enrollments. But we've been at 700 people or more for years. I believe that we can finish a, fill a 628. We're going to be able to do so going forward. I'm going to skip that last point because I'm running out of time. The build, reasonable people can disagree about whether or not we're going to actually fill the school. I think that we can. If you don't think that we can, then you probably should vote no. But if you think that we're going to be able to maintain the 700 going forward, then you can. I am wrapping up, Mr. Moderator. Town meeting has taken several votes over the last several years. And the things that we were concerned about were the fairness, the fact that out-of-district students were not, being, were not paying their fair share, and the governance. We've managed to solve the fairness through additional state regulation and that we're getting a fair share from those and we've solved the governance with this new regional agreement. This is the best solution at the best price that is available to us. Please support this building project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tosti. First of all, I want to apologize to Mr. Foskett uh, for trying to take his spot. I think my wife may be correct that I, about those new hearing aids. Um, I'm here for two reasons. Um, I prepared a handout for you that you got last week, uh, relying on some data uh, that I obtained from Minuteman on tax impact. Unfortunately, they were using medium selling price instead of assessed value. Uh, which resulted in, in slightly lower estimates uh, than the manager is using in evaluating our own schools. So in the best case scenario, where we get a third of the students from outside the district or we attract new towns that do that, instead of a $75 annual impact on the taxpayer, it'll be about $90. Uh, in the worst case, where we pay, uh, where they have no out-of-district students, we have to uh, fill the school ourselves, meaning within the district, uh, instead of $103 annual impact, it would be about $120. Uh, they're not big numbers, but I like to be accurate, and I, uh, I should have caught these, and I apologize. The second reason I'd like to is uh, the whole legal issue has been raised, uh, and I know Mr. Dunn just spoke to it, but I'd like uh, Doug Heim, our town council, to speak to whether there is any legal risk from our contingent vote that the Finance Committee has recommended that if the uh, voters on June 14th vote no, that somehow we're still going to get stuck with the debt service. 
So. Mr. Heim, what's your opinion on that, if you have one? Good evening, Doug Heim, Town Council. There are, there are two closely connected pieces which makes the risk or any risk of being saddled with debt that we can't pay for because the debt exclusion uh, was not as successful um, insubstantial in my mind. The first is that, as Mr. Foskett has noted, uh, Chapter 71, Section 16D uh, does have this 60-day window, but it actually doesn't even require approval. It just says it requires an expression of disapproval. Uh, there's no form of that disapproval that's outlined, no further definition of it. So a contingent yes has essentially been analogized to a contingent appropriation. And so we recognize on the face of it, it appears that there's this 60-day window. But what town meeting would be doing tonight is saying, yes, so long as we can pay for it. The second issue is, has to do with bond council, who you've heard a lot about already, and the issuance of the bonds. And the bond council, as Mr. Dunn had already summarized, indicated in writing that essentially, because he views this as analogous to a contingent appropriation, he's not willing to issue the bonds. And while I think that my opinion matters on this, and lots of people's opinion matters on this, it's really his opinion that matters on whether the bonds actually get issued to uh, allow Minuteman to, in, uh, to incur the debt. And if Minuteman can't have bonds issued on its behalf to incur the debt, Arlington can't be saddled with that debt. Um, I'd be happy to answer any other questions about this. I know this is a complicated issue in some ways, but again, uh, it's not that uh, anyone disagrees with the plain language presented in Section 16D. It's that absent a bond council who's willing to actually write bonds with that type of risk, because remember, the bond council is trying to uh, appropriately hedge risks for Minuteman, it presents no risks to Arlington. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ruderman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Michael Ruderman, Precinct 9. Minuteman is a fantastic place to get an education, and it educates a more diverse public uh, of students than you can imagine sitting in this room. As Mr. B uh, Dr. Bequillen mentioned, uh, District 32 miles by 35 miles from Arlington, Belmont at one end to Lancaster at the other end. Think what that means for the educational formation, for the socioeconomic backgrounds, for the Na uh, nascent goals, uh, expectations, desires for outcomes. Minuteman works. It works for a broader student population than we can imagine sitting here. Minuteman is a dump. If you've been to the building, you will cringe. I can tell you as a Minuteman parent, that the one thing that holds back Minuteman recruitment is the building. That the numbers are up 15% already this year from year to date last year is a testament to both the optimism and the execution of the recruitment plan that the Minuteman administration has undertaken and is performing on today. They don't lose kids in the description of the majors, which they call shops, they don't lose kids when they talk about what the outcomes of a Minuteman education are, whether it be going to college, going to work, going into the armed service of our nation. Minuteman loses kids when they walk through the door, and they cringe too, because the steps are broken, and the walls are cracked, and the roof leaks. It leaks a lot. It leaks in a lot of places. You can tell by the number of trash barrels on the floors of the various classrooms and the one space that technically serves as the auditorium how often it's been raining in the last week. 
the money has been spent and spent again to fix these things. It's an old building and it's hard to fix. One of the things that prevents it from being fixed thoroughly, permanently, is the fact that you've got a population of students in there all the time and you can't send them out someplace while you're trying to fix it. This is one of the unheralded bargains, if I can use that word in terms of a $145 million building project, one of the unheralded bargains of the new building plan for Minuteman in that the school district already owns the land that it's going to build on separate from the existing footprint of the building, which means that during the course of construction, nobody has to live through the job happening around them, on top of them, underneath them, surrounding them, in the next classroom over. I certainly don't have to remind anyone who's done a home remodel that didn't move out for a month or two what this is like. Or if your own kids in one of our own elementary schools has gone through the exquisite torture of not knowing where the buses are going to run this year or next year for, for your elementary school, because your elementary school is being torn apart and rebuilt, Minuteman won't have to undergo that for a new building. Of course, if all we commit to is a renovation, we get the same general outcome with all of the trauma of trying to renovate it around the existing population, the same general outcome that unfortunately we've seen through many years at Arlington High School of too little, too late, never quite effective, and economy is short and memory is long in ruining what we should have done back then to do it right the first time. But let me speak about fairness. previous speaker raised the issue of it's too expensive because if you take the number of kids we're building a new school for and you look at the cost and you divide it by the number of kids, it's a big number. Well, of course it is. If you take a six and a half million dollar fire station and you divide it by, I don't know, is, uh, Chief, I guess he's not with us tonight uh, at the moment, um, what, four, five, six, House fires in the last year, am I, am I approximately correct? Okay. Six and a half million dollars, four, five, six house fires in the last year. We spent a million dollars on those people that couldn't even fix their smoke alarms? No. This is not the way we look at municipal expenditures. Minuteman, even though it's not part of the Arlington Public School Administration and Budget, Arlington is ours, Our Minuteman is ours. Call it the 10th public school, if you will. It is ours. It's not, in, it's not in our downtown, it's not in our town center. It's not in anybody's town center. It's like you know, the, the hypothetical 10th planet, it's out in the exosphere somewhere. It's in nobody's town. Nobody feels the kind of allegiance to it that the kids do, and that the faculty do, and that the parents do. Pretty much in one of my first year or second years as a town meeting member, I guess I could say I fell in love with this institution. Because a speaker got up and said, we've got a problem, it's an expensive problem. All of our elementary schools are approaching the end of their useful lives. And we're gonna to have to rebuild them. Big gulp. We're gonna to have to rebuild them all. And we are going to rebuild them all because we're all in this together. We're going to start with the school that's the oldest and then we're going to go until we finish with the school that's youngest. We're going to start with the school in the neighborhood where the parents have the means to raise $25,000 in a silent auction in one night to stock the new library. And we're going to get to the school where so many kids are on free and reduced lunches that they just opened the doors to everybody and said, we'll call it breakfast club in the morning but we're going to do them all because they're all ours. These kids are all ours. Minuteman is ours. And I urge you to vote for that. Thank you, sir. Mr. O'Brien.
Uh, Andy O'Brien, Precinct 16. Um, those that are new to town meeting um, may not, well, they obviously don't remember that I spoke to town meeting as a student, a post-grad student at Minuteman and a town meeting member three years ago. Um, just a little update. Um, most of my classmates at the time were from Arlington. Uh, they were people of color. Uh, they were English. Most were uh, English second language students, graduates of Arlington High School, working in a nursing home. Uh, another was working uh, at, at a grocery store as a, bush, a butcher. And, you know, like anyone else, they dreamed the American dream and uh, wanted to make more money. And uh, so they ended up going to uh, Minuteman, the, pl the plumbing and the HVAC programs. And uh, today I can report, um, you know, they're probably making triple the salary they were making before. They're doing quite well. Um, and I just want to say three years ago I'd mentioned, I was trying to think, well, you know, if we we don't vote for Minuteman. What are the alternatives? And uh, you know, we could combine it into Arlington High School. I do remember when I was in fourth grade when there was another, when the schools were overburdened, and I was at the Parmenter School. They sent us over to the. There was so many fourth graders. They sent a classroom of us to the Industrial Arts, which is the senior center today. And you know, it was humming with activity, with trades going on then. And that's a, such a small building. And I guess the high school had some automotive and all that. But, you know, in 2010, Newton North redid their school, which includes, you know, they kept the trades within their, their school district, and that was $197 million. And then at the same time, uh, Cambridge Ringe, uh, they did a remodeling, and that was um, $93 million. Um, and those numbers now do seem kind of quaint, but as someone who's in the trades right now, I can tell you, the price of materials has gone up tremendously. Um, the requirements um, just to put in a hot water heater takes probably double the time to put in a hot water heater. Uh, there's probably 40% more for a basic hot water heater. Um, just pipe and other materials have gone up in the last few years quite a bit. Um, finally, I don't know if I have time for this, his, what would happen if we voted no tonight? Would the district go on? Does anyone have an answer to that question? Dr. Boquillen? <clears throat> Mr. Moderator, I believe the question was if Arlington votes no tonight, would the district go on? Uh, my answer is absolutely the district will go on. <clears throat> how it goes on and where it goes may come into question, um, but I believe very strongly um, that we will achieve a pathway to a new building. Uh, we need to, it's been eight years, but the district will continue, yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, has, is, so are there any numbers about the possibility of merging the, um, say that some of the trades and maybe a robotics program into to Arlington High School. Oh, oh, is that a question to the Arlington School yeah. Committee? Is there one of you guys? Oh, Mr. Tossey's going to give us an answer. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, the, uh, this whole discussion around vocational technical education and where it should be placed. There are superintendents of regional vocational schools that get very uncomfortable with that. I'm not one of them. Um, I believe that we can work together with Arlington High School, as we have with Lexington High School, to provide access to students from Lexington High School. We have a Minuteman in the Morning program where juniors and seniors come to Minuteman um, for half a day for their entire junior and senior year. They graduate with a degree from, I mean, the high school diploma from Lexington High School, although some might think it's a degree, um, and a trade certificate from, uh, from Minuteman. So there may be some programs that would be appropriate in the new Arlington High School, and I'll work closely as asked um, with the school committee to determine what the best mix might be. And uh, there are some vocational programs that are fairly low, low cost. Um, and that's a possibility. I appreciate the, uh, the creativity in the question. 
Thank you. Um, I guess I, one final comment. Um, a lot of you folks have probably wanted a plumber or an electrician to come to your house, and you might have had to wait a while. Um, you might have, you know, been aghast at, at the size of the bill and all that. Uh, you know, the, the trades are graying. I think the average age for a plumber now is 59, so me at 55, being an apprentice plumber, I don't feel too old. Um, but one of the reasons it's graying is, is it's, you just can't go to, you know, you know, in theory, you could go to like your, a local plumber and say, hey, can I be an apprentice for you and take a code course at night? But state law really kind of prevents that. Um, they can't take on a lot of people. Minuteman provides an opportunity where you get practical experience in the trade. You get credit, practical hours that goes towards a licensure. And, um, you know, when you get out, you're the type of, per you're the type of apprentice that, that the people in the trades need and require right now. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mr. Carmen? Uh, Ma'am? Liba, hi, I'm Precinct 11, and I rise in support of the substitute motion. Um, I think that every child is entitled to vocational education. I don't think that's what we're debating. But there are a lot of opinions being put out there that, as they are facts that really are opinions. Um, we've heard that Minuteman is a great value. Minuteman charges over 26,000 per student, Northeast 20,000, Shawsheen 18,000. There's a difference in what vocational schools cost. Minuteman provides a great education for a lot of different students. There are level two school right now. A lot of folks schools are in the same position, but not all of them are. Shawsheen happens to be one of the level one schools. Arlington High School is a level one school and has a very diverse student population. So we're in a position where those are just part of the information, the background that guides our decision about what kind of facility we want. And while the cost of the facility does seem like quite a lot, in essence, schools are expensive, and good schools are very expensive. But what concerns me even more is the assumptive cost that we're going to be taking after this renovation, if it passes, based on this idea that we're, or opinion that we're going to either attract schools that currently have their own vocational programs to abandon what they have in place and choose a more expensive option for their students and join this district, or that we're going to increase enrollment of the member towns. And in terms of enrollment of the member towns, I'm not sure, um, we all know that Arlington is about a third of the Minuteman population, but Arlington, about 9% of our high school age public students go to Minuteman. All the other member communities, that number's more at 2%. So already we have 7% higher participation in this school. Now what does that mean? There is a cost. Vocational education is more expensive than a purely academic education. And that difference is about $13,000 per student. So that 7% difference, this town has committed to those students already for $1.2 million to have additional students beyond what the other sending towns have. What we saw in the new figures suggested that Arlington's enrollment would definitely need to increase by 45 students. There's another 600,000. If that building, they don't attract other districts and they look to further grow the population, we're talking about even more. And those are reoccurring expenses. Those are not capital expenses. They're not putting a building in place. They're expenses that are going to take money out of our budget, move it into Minuteman. And, you know, it's, I mean, it's important. These children do deserve a good vocational education. I think every child deserves to finish at the high school they started. But I think we need to stop just throwing money at Minuteman and saying, what they tell us we need to do, we need to do, and it's the right and the best solution for Arlington. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Deist.
So I spent the past week, as my wife will tell you, uh, with an awful lot of time on this issue, trying to figure out for myself, what do we get for our money? What's it worth? Sort of the bottom line. And it was very hard to get information that allows you to say, yeah, this is a good thing or it's not a good thing from the point of view that, that is quantitative. To try. So I'm, I'm just going to give you a few figures that I was able to put together that I think hopefully will make it clearer to some of you anyway uh, as to what's going on here. So my first graph uh, points out that the current budget for Minuteman it, uh, is 3,650,000 and uh, 3,650,000 yes, 3, and that uh, four-year projection is 135 students. The, so that's a per pupil cost of $26,700. And across Massachusetts, all the schools, including vocational schools, cost somewhere in the range of 10,000 to 30,000 a year per student. So as you can see, Minuteman is the very high end of that. Um, Lexington, which maybe is the best school in the nation, school system in the nation, is at $17,500. Uh, Weston, which probably doesn't have the quality that Arlington has, um, is at $21,700. Uh, the one at the bottom is East Bridgewater, and they do not do very well at all. So to some extent, you pay for what you get, uh, or you get what you pay for, maybe is the right way to say that. Uh, in some instances, school systems do a really good job of getting high quality for what you pay for. And next one, please. And that's Arlington, public schools. Um, the current costs for us uh, including benefits and things like that, and we can go back and forth about because we put money uh, uh, into um, the town, in addition to the school budget, puts money into retirement and health care. So my number there of 75000 is a guess, more or less, about what it costs us to uh, fund Arlington's school system. We have... Uh, a population of 5,600 students, so that's $13,400. So it's one great buy. We're doing very, very well. Arlington's doing very, very well. We, in my estimation, the school committee might disagree with me, but in my estimation, we're in about the top 20% in terms of academic achievement and the bottom 30% of school costs. So we do very, very well. Uh, and as you can see, uh, Minuteman costs are about double ours. Well, it turns out that we have a brand new regional agreement, thanks to a number of people, including Charles Foskett and Dan Dunn. This new regional agreement gives us much more power in terms of being able to handle uh, what goes on at Minuteman High School. I think that if we go at it wisely, we can make Minuteman the kind of quality school, but not the most expensive school in the, in the, in the, in the Commonwealth. It's sort of the most expensive vocational school that gives you a superb education. What I would like is a a superb education from Minuteman that doesn't cost us so much. And now with the new regional agreement, we have a hope of doing that because now we have proportional vote according to how many students we send, more or less. So we have the ability to kind of control the costs in much the same way 
that we've controlled the costs in the Arlington school system. Okay, now I have one more, uh, maybe shaky view graph, this next one, which is um, costs for Minuteman authorization, uh, 144 uh, and a half million dollars, a planned school population of 628 students, and a per pupil building cost then of $230,000. And I also have my concept of a New Arlington High School. So that's 200 million for what I think should be 1,600 students, and the estimated cost is 125,000 per student. Now, none of the state reimbursement is in any of this. It's all just cost versus how many students are going to be there. So my conclusions are that both Minuteman and Arlington provide a very high quality education. The new Minuteman per pupil building cost for Arlington will be about 1.8 times my hypothetical high school costs. That's not unreasonable. There's a, a study that you can find from Columbia University, but the only thing that I could find anywhere that handles anything like this, which says that the costs for a typical vocational building as compared to a public school building is about 1.4 to 2.8 times. Minuteman is 1.8. So it's not off the wall. It's a pretty good number for what they are proposing. And if you think about the fact you get a new building as opposed to a renovated building, I think it's a real buy. And I think we also maybe have a chance here of driving the cost down a bit the way Arlington Schools drives the cost down uh, because we have much more power. So even though I was one of the people Some on the finance committee that voted against this, I was one of the eight out of 10 that voted no, I'm gonna vote yes. That is to say, I hope uh, I, I would propose that the uh, substitute amendment, amendment is, is defeated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Gilligan. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Stephen Gilligan, town meeting member from Precinct 13 and town treasurer. I rise in support of Mr. Foskett's substitute motion. I do so not because I am against technical or vocational school education. I support it. I rise in support of the substitute motion because we're looking at a lot of money here, and this is a money article. If we truly want to look at what kind of education we wish to provide our Arlington students, where is the comprehensive plan that says, how do we deliver that? We are being asked to vote this evening, prior to a debt exclusion vote, which is forthcoming for the town, to spend 33 to $35 million of the taxpayer's money. That's after MSBA reimbursements. If you add in the MSBA reimbursement to Arlington's portion, we're looking at $50 million. What kind of vocational technical education could be provided in a brand new Arlington High School with an additional $50 million? Maybe not everything that's being offered at Minuteman Technical School, but certainly a good chunk of it. Because we're talking one third the total cost of that full project. What is the comprehensive plan for all education for Arlington students? This, it's a rhetorical question because there's no answer. Nothing's been provided. I would like to point out in Mr. Foskett's um, presentation and comments made by others the word taxpayer fatigue. This body needs to be aware of that. So keep the following in mind. If we vote no, Minuteman continues. If we vote no tonight, that doesn't mean the project doesn't go forward, but it certainly means that a harder look has to be taken at it. 
We are also being asked to vote as a preemptive strike against a ballot question that the voters, your constituents of Arlington, are being asked to decide in another month. So the argument will be made, town meeting voted for it, so should you. Keep the other, another point in mind. A comment was made by a selectman that they will not, that individual will not authorize the bonds if the debt exclusion fails. Well, a selectman cannot stop executing bonds. Three selectmen are all it takes to move forward with bonds, not five. Also keep in mind that the Minuteman Vocational School District is going to be asking the region for a region-wide ballot question to move forward. They are going to have to provide better answers and a more comprehensive approach to what they want in the future. They're asking this town meeting to preempt any decision of the taxpayer. That's wrong. Keep the following in mind. Again, we're looking at a new Arlington High School. Pre-MSBA costs, upwards of $200 million. After the projected MSBA reimbursement, the town share $125 million. Minuteman, 33 to $35 million for town costs. The Gibbs Middle School, at least $15 million. The Stratton renovations that have been previously voted, $10 million. Audison renovations being contemplated, $25 to $30 million. The modular classrooms for the Thompson School and the Stratton School locations in the area of $20 million. We are asking the voters to take on $230 million of additional debt in the next five to seven years. That's a hefty amount of money to ask the taxpayers to bear without considerable talk, without knowledgeable conversation. Voting no tonight does not stop a new Minuteman vocational school, but it does mean that the pencil has to be sharpened. I'm asking you to support Mr. Foskett's substitute motion. Thank you. Ms. Ruderman. Thank you. Um, Julia Ruderman, Precinct 9. Got it. Is that good? Okay. Um, I'd like to urge town meeting to vote yes on Article 6. As a current Minuteman student in the engineering program, this issue is very important to me because I witness the need for a new building every day. It's essential for the future of Minuteman to have a new building. As Dr. Berquillen stated, simply doing renovations won't be enough, and it would be impractical to try to add 16 new programs to Arlington High School. I'd also like to address some of the concerns people may have about this article. As many realize, vocational and technical education is becoming more and more important. The world needs plumbers, welders, electricians, and carpenters, as well as all the other careers Minuteman prepares for. But those future plumbers and welders need modern facilities and equipment in order to be prepared to obtain their certifications, enter the workforce, and be successful. Without a new facility, these students will be at a disadvantage compared to students from other Vogue techs with more modern buildings. In addition, enrollment is a legitimate concern. As others have mentioned, a new state-of-the-art building would certainly attract more students. In addition, middle school outreach has been very successful for recruitment. I've been on some of these recruitment trips as a student ambassador, and we've had a wonderful response at every school that's allowed us to visit. I'm certain that if we could reach out to even more middle schools, enrollment would also increase. Even if the MSBA would, MSBA would allow a smaller school, we've seen the risks of building too small at the Thompson School, which is my elementary school. So I guess the biggest concern here, however, is the cost. And yes, Minuteman is expensive, but it's a necessary cost. As a previous speaker said, schools are expensive and good schools are even more expensive. Vocational technical education has always cost more than traditional education due to the necessary equipment, supplies, and tools. And if Minuteman is going to be a, a very highly ranked vocational technical school, then we need to invest that money in it. Arlington should not be shortchanging its students of their right to an effective vocational technical education. 
I've lived in Arlington my entire life, and I'm proud to say that this town has always prioritized education. And I hope that Arlington will show the same dedication to students on the vocational technical path as it does to students on the more traditional path. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ed Trembley. Ed Trembley, Precinct 19. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I had a couple of questions uh, sort of on the, the, the uh, mechanical side of the building. Um, I, I believe I recall a few years ago hearing that the Minuteman School Building Project was prepared to spend something like $6 million to remedi remediate caulking around the doors that kids have been walking past for 40 years. Um, so I was wondering if there was somebody here that could uh, uh, tell me whether or not my recollection is correct. Dr. Buquillen, is Mr. Tremblay remembering correctly? Mr. Moderator, um, I believe the, 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 the reference to that project was in one of the engineering reports where they costed out removing the caulking. Um, the caulking in schools of that vintage is expected to contain PCBs. So in order to fully remediate it, you have to remove about three feet of the masonry wall that the caulking has been laying next to for 45 years. That project has not been initiated because of all the, uh, well, I think it would be much more than six million. Now, is, is, that, um, is that remediation expense based on current standards? or based on standards from three or four years ago? Um, that estimate was done three or four years ago. Um, so is that, is that uh, figure still built into the cost of uh, renovation versus, I mean, will you have to go through this expense if you build a new school? The new school um, project that was approved by the MSBA that they're gonna participate in includes the demolition of the existing building and the remediation of the site. In other words, they'll pay that 44.75% towards the complete demolition of the, of the building and uh, remediation. But the question is, if you tear down the old building, are you still planning on cutting three feet out of every door? No, 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 no. we're not doing any of that. No. Okay, so, so we won't have that expense if you tear down the building? No, we've been pretty um, sensitive to not investing in a building that we may not have in a few years. So we haven't invested anything like that in that. No, uh, the, the question is, are you, uh, uh, will you have to spend the remediation money? That no. More, okay, no. S but you would, if we re you would if we renovated it? Yes. Okay. Um, so I have another question. Have, uh, you, you had talked about running the, uh, the new school uh, building ideas past the students. Have you run it past all the teachers? Yes. And what did the teachers have to say? Um, I met with all the departments. Uh, they've had an influence in the design. What they, have ha what they have had to say is included in the design. So are all the teachers happy with it? They'll be much happier with me after this vote, yes. <laughs> but are, they, are the teachers happy with the design of the school? They're very excited about it, yes. Oh, okay. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. LaCourt. Annie LaCourt, Precinct 15. Um, would it be possible for someone who worked on the new regional agreement to um, briefly in a couple of minutes explain to us what it would take for us to withdraw from the Man, Man District if the bad risk of the population at that school withering would, took place and what the implications would be for our capital obligation? Mr. Dunn. Regard, uh, if the building is built and we are, quote, on the hook, then we are on the hook regardless of whether or not we withdraw. Okay. So I'm short-circuiting your question and just saying we don't get it. It, it. Once we agree to pay for it, we have to pay even if we leave the district. Okay. And so then why is there a concern that if the population withers, our per-pupil costs will go up? Would we be paying additional capital expense? If 
our fraction of students stays the same, uh -huh. we, will at, we will always be at a third. If we became half of the school or two thirds of the school, then our rate uh, amount of the capital we had to pay would, would increase. Go, increase. Beyond what we're talking about potentially bonding. Right, but that which is really neither here nor there with the withering okay. because we're, a, it's, a, it's a matter of the fraction regardless of okay. the total as far as the capital costs are concerned. Okay, and, and did we consider um, the other options that Ms. Hyam spoke of in terms of joining another district, joining with other schools? We definitely did. Okay. Uh, so uh, we, um, so through, uh, through work with, uh, for instance, Charlie Lyons, of course, former selectman, uh, mm -hmm. former super in Shasheen, mm -hmm. we talked to Medford, we talked to, well, or, or the school, Minuteman mm -hmm. talked to Medford, Waltham, Everett, Cambridge, Watertown, uh, there's the Solve Collaborative, there's Lexington, Belmont, Arlington, Needham have had separate conversations on the mm -hmm. side. I could go on. Okay. And none of that emerged as an appropriate Correct. option. So we looked at the options. We have That's what's tried important. all of those. Yes. Um, having heard all of the discussion so far about costs, um, about the future of vocational education and um, the uh, population question, which looks to me like 628 is a conservative number for the eventual population of that building. Uh, compared to what's there now, compared to what has been true in the past, looking at the growth in population in our school enrollment and other school enrollments, I'm prepared to vote yes for this, despite the fact that I think that the risks that have been identified are the appropriate risks to be worried about. Um, I feel very strongly that we need to provide a good vocational option for our students. I think that the world of um, uh, education, and particularly for education in kids at the age of high school, is changing dramatically, and I think that kids are expected to be more prepared for a, a hugely varied work world now in ways that they were not expected to be when I graduated. You know, if I knew how to write good English and had read Shakespeare, I was considered educated and I could go to college or I could go into the work world and get the next thing that I needed to go on and, and have a profession. Uh, that's not true for my children, and it's definitely not going to be true for the children of those of you who have kids in our elementary schools now. And you need a broad continuum of that skill set that goes not just, it's like a high school education and a college education are almost these two separate things, and there's this gap in between. And we need to fill that with both vocational education at the high school level and vocational education heading into our community colleges and so on and so forth. And I see this as a piece of the continuum that we need to provide. Um, Julia, who just spoke, is going on to college for Minuteman. I don't remember exactly which school she's going to. I think, is it Alabama? Anyway, she's going to a great school. And she's not the only graduate of Minuteman who will go on to a great college. And there will be other students who do not go on to college, but who go on to more technical training or go on to um, into the world of work. And we're offering options to all of our students. I don't think we can do that in the Arlington High School. Um, and more importantly, I don't think we want to do that in the Arlington High School. I think we want this tool in our toolbox, and I'm prepared to support this project. I'm prepared to take that risk. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Gentleman in the back, yep. It's quarter of 11. I got you on the list, sir. I have you on the list, and I have Mr. Hainer on the list. Tom Michaelman, Precinct 7. A uh, previous speaker came up here and said, if we vote this down, uh, the new school could go forward. That wasn't my understanding, but I'd love to hear from somebody who could tell me what happens, what's the possibility of a new school, or how long would it take if we vote uh, this article down today, tonight. Dr. Boquillan. Mr. Moderator, um, I understand the question is if we vote it down, how long would it take to get a new school? Or <clears throat> There are varying opinions about that. I'll give you mine. Knowing MSBA as I do, <clears throat> and actually them knowing us as well as they do, um, and having been at many uh, MSBA board meetings where different projects have been discussed at different phases and stages. The, the idea that we could 
um, stop this process and get back in line for a project of this scale is, is unlikely. Um, there's only a limited amount of money that the MSBA sets aside for new projects. And the last I heard, there were only three new schools being built in the Commonwealth with MSBA from the ground up, and Minuteman was one of them. Um, I think the likelihood of entering the MSBA process again would be very unlikely. The other dollar component of this is that we were grandfathered in as a 40% reimbursement rate, a minimum of a 40% reimbursement rate. If we get excluded or kicked out of the pipeline, that minimum reimbursement rate, even if we do get back in, shrinks to 31%. So that's 9%, millions of dollars that we would not have even if we were to get in. When you look at the escalation of construction costs, and there appears to be quite a building um, surge going on right now, um, those costs for the same building are going to increase or we're just not going to get the building we could get right now. So I'm very concerned if this vote doesn't happen. On a practical level, because of the Belmont vote, I have a meeting with MSBA tomorrow to discuss our next steps. And in the memo that I wrote, um, it, I'm sorry if I'm going on, but is this helpful? It's helpful, thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, the memo that I wrote to all of you and Needham as well that um, I would not support a district-wide ballot at this time is because I think there is a lot of misunderstanding about what happens during a district-wide ballot or specifically what happens if a town, a town citizen does not approve it. Um, there are some folks that think they could simply exit the district, walk out the door and not be liable for any debt. That's not the case. There's a process that has to be followed, and I think there's a, a lot of misunderstanding about that. So my intent is to discuss with the school committee and its officers, if the vote fails, um, to go to a district uh, under 16D again, and that we would just simply um, force a town to hold a special town meeting over the summer to say no again, because no action is considered an approval. I don't know if that's all. This is complex stuff, and it's getting late. Uh, but I hope that answered your question. Thank you. I have one more question. Um, on slide seven, um, the uh, school building, um, you had an option B new building, 143 million. Option H um, for new building with 628 students, 144 million. Um, and then you had an, an option E new with 800 students of 192 um, million or 193 million. So the economies of scale between 100, 435 and 628 student size school are minuscule. And then when you go up to 800, they seem to kick in. What, what is driving those numbers? Those numbers were submitted to the MSBA fee, um, Facilities Assessment Subcommittee about a year ago in a meeting. They, were, they asked us to update the previous preliminary schematic design submission of two years earlier than that. Um, so those, all the cost options could be seen in the dollars that they wanted to see them in. I, the architects and engineers did that, I didn't do that. But I think when you looked at the 800 schools specifically, there were three or four more programs being offered in that 800 sized school facility. In the 435, there was only one less program, but a significant reduction in the number of career majors. So the facility, was well designed, but it was designed for a more expansive curriculum and educational program plan. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Helmuth. Eric Helmuth, Precinct 12. I move the question on all matters before it. Okie dokie. We have a motion to terminate debate on the question on all matters before it. Um, as soon as Mr. Lathwood's ready, we're going to do a vote. Uh, yes to terminate debate, number one. No, number two. 
We're terminating debate. One to terminate, two, no. Your click is not working. Oh, Liz, you have something to do. Did her job. Uh, debate is terminated. 138 in the affirmative, 45 in the negative. Okay, debate is terminated on Article 6 of the special town meeting. We have before us first Mr. Um, Foskett's substitute motion. We're going to vote on Mr. Foskett's substitute motion first, depending on the outcome of that. We're going to have a second vote. We're going to have the second vote either way. So if you want Mr. Sub. Mr. Foskett, substitute motion, you'll vote one, yes. If you do not want it, you'll vote two for no. So as soon as we're ready, one, yes to substitute, two, no to not. It's a negative vote, 41 in the affirmative, 151 in the negative. It is not substituted. We have now before us a recommended vote of the Finance Committee. This is a bonding issue, so it has to be by a two-thirds issue. It's a majority? Yep. It says borrowing. Ah, it's, I'm wrong. It's a majority vote. So as soon as Mr. Lathwood's ready. What? We're going to vote on the Finance Committee's recommended vote, as Mr. Tosti told us the one he handed out the other day, to borrow the 144 mil, uh, to say we're going to borrow it. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Lathwood. All in favor, please vote one for yes, two for no. Huh? Yeah, well, forget all that. To get the top thing. That's wrong. Oh, so did our clock go away. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we already passed six by two thirds. Special town meeting number six. Recommended vote of the FinCom. We are voting on the recommended vote of the Finance Committee on Article 6 of the Special Town Meeting to approve borrowing $144,922,478. If you want to build a school, vote yes. If you don't, vote no, essentially. That right, Dan? Yeah. Ready, Ms. Lathwood? All right, go ahead. One for yes, two for no. It's an affirmative vote, 165 in the positive, 32 in the negative. 31 in the negative, I'm sorry. 165, 4, 31 in the negative. That ends uh, Article 6 of the special town meeting. Mr. Tosti? Hey, wait a second. We haven't adjourned yet. We have to put this on the table. And go ahead, Al. I got a notice of reconsideration. Move we adjourn.
Any notices of reconsideration? Motion to adjourn. All in favor, please say yes. yes. No. All right, we're adjourning to Wednesday.